Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be measuring distance with an ultrasonic sensor. This is the HCSR04. This is one of my favorite components. You'll see these a lot for those obstacle avoiding robots, but I actually like to use these to make interactive props, attractions, exhibits, because it works a lot differently than your typical motion sensor, this PIR sensor here, or passive infrared. So if somebody passes by, it can activate a prop. This one is far more nuanced because it can read distances. You can have something happen when a person is near an object, then something else as they get closer and closer. So perfect for escape rooms, great for props when you want them to use different dialogues, depending on how far away the person is. Maybe you can activate different colors or patterns of light. Whereas this, you kind of get one shot. So how does this thing work? It's a lot like a bat or daredevil because it uses echolocation to find out how far away objects are in its environment. The most obvious thing you're going to notice right off the bat is these huge, I'll call them bat eyes. And you can see one is labeled T and one is R. So these are transducers. This is the one that transmits an ultrasonic pulse and this one receives it. It's a really easy hookup, only four pins. We have VCC for five volts, a trigger pin. This triggers our transmitting transducer to send out that pulse. And then we have the echo pin, and that basically times the pulse from when it leaves the transmitter to when it comes back to the receiver. And then, well, we can't forget our ground. So let's get this guy hooked up. And to help keep him upright like that, I'm gonna stick him in a breadboard. Stab him right in there. Bust out the trusty Arduino. That first pin was our VCC pin or the five volts. So I'm gonna hook it up from the back, matching it up and into the five volts of the Arduino. For the trigger pin, he's back here. He's our next victim. And I'm going to put him into pin nine. It was looking at me funny. So now he got chosen. Next up is our echo. And I'm going to put him into 10. And finally the ground. And he can hang out right here, right next to the five volt. And that is it for the hookup. So what we're going to do with our code is initiate the trigger pin. And we do that by sending a signal from the Arduino through this purple wire here to the trigger pin or bringing the trigger pin to high for 10 microseconds. Yeah, not milliseconds like we're used to with the Arduino, but microseconds. And that's the magic number that the ultrasonic sensor knows. Uh oh, it is time to send an ultrasonic pulse. And this pulse travels at the speed of sound. It's going to send eight short little pulses at 40 kilohertz each. And this is a very specific pattern because it's going to bounce off an object and then the receiver is going to be looking for that pattern. And that's because there's other ultrasonic noise in the air. And so it knows to look for that very specific pattern. So as soon as that burst of eight pulses goes out, well, now the echo pin goes high. And as soon as it goes high, this little guy up here, starts to count in microseconds. So out goes the pulse at the speed of sound and it hits the object, comes back to the receiver, and then the echo pin goes low. It stops timing. So with all this timing going on, how do we actually get the distance? Unfortunately for that, I'm going to have to fire up the DeLorean and we're going to go back in time to high school math class. But don't worry, I'm going to keep the engine running because we're going to come right back as fast as we can. All right, students, class is in session. We can get distance by simply multiplying speed times time. And so it turns out we actually know these two things because the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. And time, 
Well, we can get that from the ultrasonic sensor. So once it calculates a time, we use this equation to then calculate distance. But there's one little hiccup. Remember, the ultrasonic sensor times in microseconds, not in seconds. So we got a little conversion to do, not too bad. So 343 meters per second turns out to be 0 0.034 centimeters per second. Their detection range is about two centimeters to about 400 centimeters. That equals maybe 0.7 inches to 157 inches or 13 feet. If the object is any closer than two centimeters, well, then you're practically in its blind spot. Once we have the distance in centimeters, well, then you can convert to inches, you can convert to feet, and even meters. But there's still one more thing we got to fix with this whole thing. Because remember, this time is the time it takes for the pulse to go, hit the object, and then come back. So that's kind of going to give us twice the distance that we need. So we're going to have to take this entire equation here and then divide it by two. So that way we only get the one way distance. All right, everybody hop back into the DeLorean and we're going to go back to the future. This is accurate to three millimeters. So let's do some testing of our own here. All right. You know what time it is to the code. Let's see what I came up with here. And the first thing I like to do is set up any of my Arduino pin connections as variables in the program. That way you can move things around later. So for my trigger pin, I called it trick pin and I set it to pin nine. And then we had that echo pin and that is connected to pin 10 of the Arduino. And for both of these, you'll see that the type of variable that I chose is a constant integer. Integers we know are whole numbers. So that is perfect perfect for pins and constant while the pins aren't just going to jump by themselves. So this helps the program be more efficient. Next, I set up a few more variables for information that we're going to try and extract. So for instance, duration, and that's that time that we want to keep track of. So how long does it take for the signal to leave the ultrasonic sensor and then get to the object? And unlike an integer, this may not be a whole number. It might be like 10.2 centimeters. So in that case, that's why we're using the float because it allows us to include those decimal points. We're going to want to see the distance both in centimeters and in inches. So I set up variables to store those numbers as well. And then for the setup section, this is the section where the code only runs one time. The first thing I do is initialize our serial monitor because we need a way to see these numbers. And of course you can later attach an LCD monitor if you want to use your ultrasonic sensor as kind of like a handheld ruler, but this will get us started for now. And then I set our pin modes. How do we want our pins to behave inputs or outputs? The trigger pin is definitely going to be an output because we are going to be outputting a high signal or five volts from the Arduino to the ultrasonic sensor for 10 microseconds to initiate that burst. And then for the echo pin, that's going to be receiving the burst. So that's going to be set as an input. Now on to the loop. This is where all the distance bat daredevil action happens. So before we go ahead and send that signal for 10 microseconds, it's good practice to start with a clean signal. So I'm going to purposefully set that trigger pin to low, and I'm only going to do it for two microseconds. That's all it takes. It's like, okay, we're about to send. And now I'm going to send the trigger signal. So I'm going to digital write that pin, the trig pin to high. And I'm going to delay microseconds, which is different than the delay that we normally use, which is in milliseconds. So we're only going to keep it high for 10 microseconds. That is the magic number. And then we're going to turn it off. Next, I have a few notes over here as to how this function works. So remember, once that burst of eight pulses goes out, that echo pin is going to go from low to high and it's going to start to time in microseconds. So when it's high, this function pulse in is going to help us extract that time. 
So it's going to return the pulse duration in microseconds. So that's how we're gonna get our duration. We are going to use this pulse in function and measure the echo pin while it's high. Next, I have a few more notes to explain our math that we just did back in high school, which is the first thing we're gonna do is get that distance in centimeters, cause that's the easiest one to get first. And we're gonna do that by converting the 343 meters per second into 0.034 centimeters per microseconds. So when we input that into the equation, it's gonna take the duration multiplied by that speed of sound in centimeters per microsecond. And remember, we got to divide it by two or else we get double the distance. We just need distance to the object. And that's going to give us how many centimeters is this object from the ultrasonic sensor. But other metrics are also nice to have, like the distance in inches. So to convert to inches, one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So that's a simpler equation. To get the distance in inches, we're just gonna take that distance in centimeters and divide it by 2.54. All right, so now all the math is done. How do we actually see this stuff? So we're gonna look at it in Arduino's own serial monitor. And to get that, I wanna create kind of a nice printout. So here, we're gonna ask it to print the word distance, and then we're going to have it print the distance in centimeters. Next, we wanna put a centimeter label so it's not just a number, and then the separator bar, because after that, we are going to print the distance in inches. So they're gonna be side by side, centimeters in inches, and they're gonna scroll past us. And of course, for the distance in inches, we wanna label that inches so we don't confuse the two. And then to slow down the readings, we are going to add a delay. Now this is in milliseconds of 100 milliseconds or else the numbers fly by so fast that you can barely see them. All right, let's start echolocating some stuff. I'm gonna upload this and you know the rule, everybody throw shade at the code, give it side eye, put fear in it so it compiles the first time. Oh, and you can already see, look at these numbers coming up. So you wanna pay attention to the line that is most at the bottom here. That's the freshest reading. And you can see they're still scrolling by pretty quickly. If you need to slow it down more, just increase the time in here. All right, I'm just gonna use this random box. Let's see what's gonna happen. And I'm gonna put this at, let's try 15 centimeters right here. There. And yeah, we're getting about 15.20, 15.16. It's kind of like waffling in that area there. And then we have inches. So we have one, two, three, four, five, almost six inches. And we can see those numbers are correct there too. So I'm gonna start slowly moving up and you can see that it calculates in pretty much real time. And we're almost at that blind spot. Let's see if we can hit it. And then the numbers get kind of wonky. There we go. So that's what happens when you hit the blind spot. It's giving me 2,100 and some centimeters, which we know that is not true. If you are working with a prop, then you can further convert these into feet. So if somebody approaches, well, you can have a certain sound effect or a lighting scheme. And then as they progress forward, you can have things change. People use this for parking assistance all the time. As you back up your car into the garage, you can put an LED strip or have a beep play as soon as you reach maybe a foot or two from the back wall. And I'll show you how to do that along with many other things like triggering sound effects, lighting, motors, and servos in the next few tutorials. If you guys have any questions about the code you just saw or any of the wiring, don't hesitate to post in the comments below. Also, that code is available on my website. Link for that is below. If you want more personalized help with your project, I invite you to join my community. Plus, we have live video chat events every week. 
anything from live workshops to Arduino project challenges, community build sessions, and office hours. So that way you can show me your circuits. You can share your screen and show me your code and we can fix things together. Link for that is also below. I don't know about you, but I had a blast with you guys. And luckily, when we went back in time, we did not see our past selves. If you were to ever see your future self, that's bad news. Name me one movie in the comments where future self comes back to past self with good news. So if I see my future self ever, I'm running. Bye.